So EBITDA EBITDA is a ratio uh, used to compare businesses in the same industry. EBITDA to EV gives us a percentage ratio and EV to EBITDA gives us a, a multiple we can use. EV is enterprise value. EBITDA is earnings before interest, tax, appreciation, and amortized expenses. EV is market cap plus long-term debt, short-term debt, plus other obligations. The theory behind EV is it's how much it would cost to buy the entire business. So obviously you'd have to pay stockholders, uh, any debt and um, other obligations, and then you can subtract any cash or investments the business has, minus investments, investments. EV to EBITDA is a ratio, best for comparison. So for example, 12 is better than 18. The lower, the better, the less you're paying. Even on the EV, it's a percentage similar to cap ratio in real estate, which is where 5% is essentially, means you get 5% of the purchase price in terms of net income every single year for real estate. And then for stock, it's for a company, it's very similar with EBITDA to EV, 5% is how much you expect to earn um, before earnings the taxes and the I mean, before taxes and depreciation. Um, is so you'd earn 5% if you bought the entire company. I'll show you how to do all of that in Google Sheets. Okay, so I have two comparisons here, Apple and Microsoft. So I just start by putting the ticker symbols in, ticker symbols. So this is Apple and this is Microsoft. Okay. So the first thing we would need to do is find all cash and investments and total debt for both companies. So this is a comparison here. Um, so to find EV, enterprise value, um, we'd also need net income here uh, for EBITDA, for EBITDA. So I'll pull EPS and shares, um, and I can pull that just like this. Equals Google Finance, the sell apples in, just like this with commas, um, a comma and then two parentheses, EPS. And then for shares, just equals Google Finance. Almost the same thing. Just like that. Shares. Okay, put this in accounting. And we can do the same thing over here. We can actually probably copy this same thing because it's in the same place. There we go. So that would So then we can get the net incomes down here. Net income, net income. Then that would just be EPS times the amount of shares they have, or per share times how many shares are out. And we can do the same formula over here for Microsoft. Now I didn't pull interest tax appreciation. I will pull that real quick. I'll be right so I went ahead and pulled all of those, um, all of those, real quick. Oh, I didn't mean that. Go back. Okay. Um. So the first step would be to find EV and EBITDA, both of them. Let's go ahead and do that. Take this, put that over here. Okay, so EBITDA is going to equal net income. So we did EPS times shares, so that, uh, did I bring that? Yep, net income, plus depreciation, plus interest and taxes. Um, and that will give us that number, EBITDA. Okay. We will, and we will find that for Microsoft. Okay, make sure that's right. We have interest, tax, depreciation, depreciate, um, amortization, net income. Everything's been added up here. Yes, everything has been added up here. Okay. Um, perfect here. And then we will need enterprise value. So with that, we're going to need the market cap. Um, so shares times Google Finance, ticker, um, and then it'll actually just come up with it. And that will give us the market cap. So uh, we have to add to that um, total debt and then minus total cash. Um, and that should be our enterprise value right there. And then we can paste that over here, and it'll find it for this column as well. Okay, there we go. So, and then we can find our EV to EBITDA ratio, EV to EBITDA ratio for both of them. We will take EV divided by EBITDA, 
that'll give us 23.4. And we could do the same thing for this column, copy this and paste it over here. Now find our Microsoft for Microsoft 26.98. And then in order to find EBITDA to EV, EBITDA to EV, EBITDA to EV, we can just find, we can just use reciprocal. So equals one divided by one, one divided by whatever the EV to EBITDA ratio is. And that gives us our EBITDA to EV ratio. We can just change this to percentage. And that is our comparison done. So this entire thing is done here. So based off of this, it looks like Apple actually is set up for a better return than Microsoft. Um, however, you have to obviously look at other factors, but it does look like Apple is priced better at this moment in time.